Hello everyone. I know it's been a while, but I am back and today we are talking about more spoilers. Uh, but before that, I don't want to get into too much detail, but yeah, I know it's been a while. I uh, had, had to deal with a couple things, just started a new job, and yeah, that's why I've been away. I hope you didn't miss me much, but we're here. Uh, yeah, so a couple things, just I guess information before we get in there. Uh, our local scene is struggling here in Miami. Uh, one of our local car shops just, uh, like I guess, stopped uh, having, stopped carrying, or will stop carrying Final Fantasy, meaning we're not getting Opus 8 at our store, um, at this store in particular anyway, and no pre-release kits. So that's going to be a bummer for us. So, I don't know, I hope you guys aren't in the same boat, but if you are, then here's some spoilers you guys can look forward to. Um, <laughs> kind of like I am, I'm just going to have to wait till my boxes come in or whatever. Um, and yeah, speaking of boxes, if you guys haven't gotten yours, please check out Happy Little Hug Factory. Uh, follow the, the code on, in the description and you can pick up your boxes there. Uh, they are running out. Remember I mentioned quantities are limited, so get in there. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of stuff has happened since our last spoiler video, uh, and I mean a lot of spoilers. So I was able to grab a couple from every element. Uh, we will be starting off here with uh, Fire. Fire is has a bunch of interesting things, and they're kind of going in a lot of different directions, and uh, that's what we're going to kind of talk about. So I put up, uh, I only put up six for, about six for each uh, element. Uh, we haven't been, we've only been spoiled one light card, but uh, I, I chose to omit it for now because uh, we don't have the English translation exactly, and I want to be sure about it. Uh, same thing I did, like, you know, same thing I said with the last time we ran through these. Um, but yeah, so this is the first batch. Uh, this first one is going to be fun, and I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Lava Spider, uh, the attacking forwards you control gain 3,000 power. Uh, it's definitely pretty, it's definitely uh, an interesting card. Uh, a lot of things to think about here. So if you guys haven't noticed, it doesn't say attacking until the, uh, you know, they don't gain the power until the end of the turn, meaning it, that power will come and go as soon as the forward is, as soon as we've resolved battle, I guess. Um, so if something blocks and let's say I'm at 10K, like my, th my three drop sevens go to 10 and you block with an eight or even another seven, uh, once that damage is resolved, my forward will also die. Um, so this is interesting for a lot of reasons, um, because the again because mainly because the power reduction doesn't make it till the end of the turn or at least until main uh, main phase two or anything like that, but it is going to help a lot of um, you know a lot of characters deal with you know bigger threats. Uh, sometimes things like I feel like ice is going to take the most advantage of this, uh, but I don't know if a fire. So the argument was that like fire needed a lot of great cards, right? But when I think of this card, I don't want to put it in fire. I want to put it in other things. And I think that's what fire is going to be like doing a lot this set. It's going to be going into a lot of other colors. And that's exciting though, right? Because we haven't seen those combinations before. like Or we have, but they're just not as um, popular. And with that increase, we will see a lot more diversity in the game, which is going to be great. Um, but yeah, definitely a strong card. Uh, it's just a rare too, so we're, everyone's gonna hit these in the pre-release and in like I can't imagine everyone hitting Lava Spider in uh, in drafting and the Crystal Cups. So be ready, be on the lookout for that. Um, and it has uh, FFCC, so that title is getting stronger too. Uh, now we're moving on to Rain. Uh, sorry about some of these guys. These are um, still screenshots of other screenshots and stuff like that. So <laughs> some of them are blurry and some of them are great. Um, but uh, uh, Rain. Job class knight, he's fire, which is cool. Uh, we have we need more fire knight cards. Uh, when rain enters the field or attacks, choose a forward. You may pay fire. You may pay one fire if you do so. Deal it three thousand damage. Um, in my book, that makes him a pretty decent card. He's going to be, I guess, he's going to replace what I think Dark Lord is. Um, you know, we we always, you know, Kageyama put used to put Dark Lord in there, and then people have always teched Dark Lord just to kind of deal with, you know, the Layla Viking stuff and any of those little things. Um, but he's going to do it better and probably cheaper over time. So, um, yeah, so Dark Lord effectively costs you, what, 13 CP? Because, you know, you mill, you RFG 10 cards, that's 10, and then he costs 3, right? Uh, Rain will be 3, and you'll only spend as much as you need to here, and you can do it from backup, so you'll never have to, like, 
you know, get rid of your, or you could always get rid of your hand from it, I suppose, if it means the difference, like if it means winning the game. Um, but yeah, it'll, it, it's just gonna be cheaper over time. So it's like in, in total cost value for fire, this is gonna be a great card. Definitely gonna see play. Um, FFBE is gonna be fun. I love this Uncharted territory for the game. Remember, this is like a mobile game and not, it was not in chapters, I believe. So it's like, you know, these effects are gonna be, I feel like these effects are gonna come out stronger than like some of the regular effects that are being reprinted and re like or touched up or whatever so be on the lookout for them we got a lot more to talk about too of those guys uh and then samurai here uh if you have three if you have received three points of damage or more samurai gains brave which is okay if you have received five points of damage or more samurai gains a thousand power which is also okay uh so so if we're looking at all these cards right uh fire's doing a couple things uh this is kind of like their their realm of skills or their realm of abilities, right? So attacking forwards, you know, we go back to other attacking things. It was selfie, and uh, I, I can't remember the other ones, but they did have a few that says only when it's attacking, right? Or, you know, there, it was like three drops. I think it was Zell or Ward or something like that, or even uh, something, I don't know, one of the other like randoms that you guys don't play unless it's in title. And it says when they're attacking, they gain X power. So that's kind of what they're saying. So they're gonna be the most threatening when they're attacking. Uh, and then the rain one also says when it enters the field or attacks, kind of like Saban. Uh, Saban has that option to choose something that's unbreakable when it enters the field or attacks. Um, and then as it's attacking, it can do something. Again, same same motif there. And then the other one is that fire will be start using uh, life, like your life, your damage points, as a resource. And if you guys don't play Fusoya, like that's going to be something very difficult to manage. So. Um, be careful of that like because there's it <laughs> living in that realm of like it's dangerous man really just dealing yourself damage just to get the perks of effects or stuff um that's why people play uh what's it called dark summon <laughs> uh arc or whatever just to just to break all your stuff and deal themselves damage and then that's how you'll titus uh special or whatever it's just fire's gonna be doing a lot of that and then uh yeah, so those are things to look out. Uh, the next three I chose were uh, Archangel uh, HM, and I don't know, man. I just hate this eleven art. Eleven arts are literally screen caps of the, the like the, the characters, the NPCs and shit. And I'm just like, okay, no thanks. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the art, so these are just like punches in the faces. Uh, if Archangel HM deals your opponent uh, deals damage to your opponent, double the damage. Uh, and you you heard that right, guys. This guy deals two points of damage whenever he hits you directly. Um, he's going to be super threatening. And then when Archangel H attacks, uh, he gains 3,000 power until the end of the turn. So putting this guy with the stupid spider right next to each other, that's plus 6k when he attacks. So he's hitting for 12, and you're going to want to, you know, he's either going to kill something or, I don't know, man. This guy's going to be a threat. And he's only a rare, too. He's... He's gonna be trouble. He is only six thousand, so he isn't in a safe spot like before attack. Um, a lot of things can answer that, but yeah, dealing two points of damage is gonna be hurt. And then this is this is what I was talking about too. So these guys are most threatening when they're attacking. Um, but then like if you're playing fire and you're in a mirror match against anyone that, or a, a fire mirror match or anyone playing you know the subtype fire, and you have and you run into this guy, being at five points of damage is gonna be a very dangerous world to live in because this guy can end the game when you least expect it right like you can drop him and if, and you know let's say you're playing Godot right because Godot is good Godot will attack give it haste and then he can go in make him unblockable or whatever um, with something and that's it you know game over uh, this guy's gonna be fun to deal with uh, Golem or <laughs> yeah Golem uh, Golem when Golem enters the field choose a forward it gains 2,000 power until the end of the turn cool simple uh, put Golem into the break zone, choose one attacking forward, it gains 4,000 power until the end of the turn. Same thing, see, uh, fire is going to be most threatening when it's attacking. Um, I think first strike is going to be important going forward, so we're going to need to see how we can apply that to some of our forwards or prevent that because, yeah, this is going to hurt. All this damage is going to be hard to deal with. Uh, when Saban attacks, choose a forward, deal it 2,000 damage. If you control a card named Edgar, deal at 4,000 damage instead. Uh, so I like that six is getting reprint, like uh, new faces, like I don't wanna say reprints because that's not the word, uh, but just other versions of themselves, which are cool because uh, it's gonna help title a lot 
and it's just going to be like a refreshing right like you're going to see different variants of those cards which are good because some of them unfortunately like as great as they are aren't played too much now uh so that's going to help this a lot um yeah that wraps up fire guys uh these cards are pretty strong and like i said uh you got to be careful with all of them man uh, they're going to be most threatening when they're attacking so we're going to need to find a way to play like uh get stuff to prevent them from attacking or stuff that'll hold them back like because if not they're just gonna run right through you uh, next, we move on to the Earth cards. Now, I, I really enjoyed some of these Earth cards, and I'm really hyped for most of them, actually. Uh, I feel like Earth so far is coming out to be the strongest, in my opinion. Um, I'm not saying that all the other cards are bad, but Earth is going to be definitely a lot more fun. Uh, so I grabbed these. By the way, guys, these are in no particular order, if I didn't mention that. Um, I just grabbed everything I could, put them together, and now I'm, we're going to talk about them. Because, again, a lot has happened. And honestly, there was still a lot more that I could have chosen for like a couple of these elements. But I just thought the ones that I felt were more interesting. I don't want to ruin, spoil too much because um, uh, we're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about once the whole set comes out. Uh, when Luminous uh, Puma enters the field, choose a forward in your break zone and add it to your hand. Uh, yeah, choose a forward in your break zone, add it to your hand, which is cool. When put Luminous, uh, put the Puma into the break zone, choose a forward or backup in your break zone and add it to your hand. Uh, this is a cool card for five cost. It's kind of expensive. Um, but then again, I'm pretty sure when he enters, uh, um, I think because when his enters ability is to choose immediately, I don't know if you'll be able to take the cost that you pitched for this, making him, you know, a three drop monster. Um, but it's still a cool card. If there's a new way to bring out cheaper monsters for free, I mean, bigger monsters, I don't want to say for free either. I mean, like bring them out more effectively. Um, this card's gonna be really useful. Um, it's kind of like a better miner, but more just in a monster version too, right? Because we can choose whenever we want, and then we can fish back a forward or back up later, which is gonna be cool. Um, yeah, uh, this next one I'm pretty excited about too. Uh, I just love the art too. I know, uh, I don't know. I just finished playing nine again, and Fenrir. This Fenrir is so great. <laughs> he looks so cool. I love this like interpretation of him. Um, if you cast Fenrir, you may pay two extra, so a four drop, four cost. Uh, choose a light forward or dark forward, break it. If you paid the extra cost, remove it from the game instead. Okay, so that's cool. Um, it's just like a two cost, uh, break a light or dark. And then I don't think we need to remove uh, darks, light or darks from the game yet for any reason. Um, but maybe this <laughs> this game will change, this uh, set will change that. We haven't seen... Uh, we know what the light and dark forwards are in this one, the legendaries, but we haven't seen their effects or what they do. So, uh, and if you guys don't know yet, um, it's definitely going to be Rain and uh, Veritas of the Dark. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Veritas of the Dark. We don't, we actually haven't seen any of the dark cards. I like that. Don't, yeah. That's, those are my guesses, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be cool. It's going to be a cheap way to deal with that. It's going to be fun just to... Um, deal with, you know, that's another, these are, these are cheap outs to like Nidhogg and Yuri, which are probably the most played now. Um, we might see, uh, like, how do, what's his name? Cloud come back, like Opus One Cloud because of all the seven support that's coming out because of the third deck. Um, so this might be another way to deal with him because AK Brave with like silly effects is, is annoying all the way. <laughs> um, next is Tifa. Tifa is one of the starter deck cards. Uh, if you control card named Cloud Forward, the cost of playing Tifa onto the field is reduced by two, which is great. Um, uh, she has Brave, I guess. I wish they would put it on top. Uh, I need that consistency, but I guess she has Brave. And then Final Heaven, S, one Earth, tap, choose a Dole Forward, deal it uh, 10,000 damage. That's cool. I like that. Um, so I think 10,000 is going to be the new good thing that you're looking forward in effect. Um, like I was mentioning, Fire is going to have... Uh, fire is having a lot of these buffs while they're increasing like while they're attacking um, but I think overall the whole set is gonna make uh, bigger forwards a bigger threat so things like maybe final heaven or even cactuar or like those Alexanders that says break a nine drop anything that's like here higher things like that are gonna be more useful and I feel like cloud of darkness is gonna lose its its shine it lose its value a little bit because um, you won't be able to kill things unless you have five things on the board. And then obviously you can, you know, respond and deal with change the numbers on the board. And then, you know, you'll save your 10Ks all the time. 
10 keys are hard to get get through and that's why uh cloud is so good now because everything lives in the realm of eight and nine and stuff like that or seven and eight um yeah so this 10k stuff is going to be important keep that in mind guys uh the next three are going to be Undead Princess, Arden, and Prompto. These are the ones I'm pretty excited about too. I wasn't I wasn't happy with Undead Princess the first time I saw it, but then I went back and I read it again, and it seems like a pretty good guide. It is a hero. Um, but yeah, when Undead Princess enters the field, choose one forward. If your opponent doesn't pay three CP, color any color, it cannot attack or block this turn. So every time she comes into the board, she's a two drop that does that. And then put two Earth backups into the break zone, play Undead Princess onto the field dull, you can only use this ability if Under Princess is in the break zone. So she has that um, she has that Kuju ability that you can break two, uh, you know, put two Earth backups. Put two Earth backups, very important. Uh, play Undead Princess onto the field dole, and then she'll do that and then make something unblockable, right? So if you sleep on her and you don't remember that she's in the break zone, uh, like late game, your opponent will do this, uh, make something unblockable if you can't afford it, and or force, force that out of your hand first before like entering battle. Uh, meaning either you pay for this thing can't block or you can't cast your summons so yeah and then what's cool about this too what i think about i like about this the most is that you can do this as many times as you want like during throughout the whole game um so like i know that's going to be a lot of um you know backups that you end up sending um but earth has really strong backups anyway i, I don't think earth has a problem with um like sending backups and then replaying them right so a couple of examples are raban um, the Musario and uh, I can't remember his name, but the one that searches, it's a four drop that searches, um, or even um, Masked Woman, you know, something that breaks a dole. Like, if I'm playing multiples of these, right? Like, and then I have this, I can effectively tap two to play her, right? And then I don't know, let's let's think of a play here, tap two to play her, right? Um, make something unblockable, no, and then I will Hecaton send two. To, to send her and then put those back and then with the last ones I can uh, tap and then pitch and then do maybe under princess or mass print mass the mass woman again break something that's dull you know silly stuff like that so I think it's gonna be cool that um, earth is gonna have more stuff to take away from its like backup line to replay other backups again the w one of the most important ones is gonna be like the ex burst because people will play the ex burst deck and if you can play those ones again then you're in a good spot right um, so she's really cool she does, she's going to be doing a lot of a lot of work next set. Uh, Arden, legendary, brave. See how brave's on the top instead of Tifa. It's at the bottom. It's weird. Uh, I don't know if that bugs you guys, but it definitely bugs me. Uh, Arden cannot be broken. Period. Uh, at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, your opponent selects one character he or she controls. He or she may put it into the break zone. If she does, so Arden cannot block this turn. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be annoying to deal with. Um, so you know, Arden can just block all day, meaning you'd have to get away around him. Uh, he seems like a pretty strong card. I'm glad they threw him in the seven range, meaning he's not star. You can't star sibble him down. Um, he is gonna be cool. Uh, his title, he's 15, and this is what I was talking about too. See, these are the like more uh, 15 characters that we don't we don't know what to expect from them because this is all like uncharted territory. I think Arden's cool. Um, I can just picture abusing him a lot with Hecatons and like Yojimbos and stuff since he can't be broken. I think he's going to be a better Galif. Uh, um, and like he, he'll sit there. With, he's another one of those like I'll put him down and then I'll sin on the board, you know, just break everything. Uh, but whatever. Interesting. Let's see how he plays out. Uh, and I wanted to keep Prompto on here because, you know, more 15 is great. Uh, so we, by the way, guys, just so if you don't know, uh, we have Prompto. We have Noctis, uh, Gladiolus, Prompto, and Arden now. Uh, Su and Luna Freya was was revealed, but she was one of those Japanese uh, like we haven't gotten the English translation complete text, so I didn't want to put it up. Uh, and now we have, and now all we're missing is Ingus or Ing Ingus Ignis, whatever. Uh, I really hope he's also Earth. Uh, but anyway, uh, Prompto backup six cost backup. Uh, Ex bears when Prompto enters the field, choose a forward your opponent controls. If your opponent controls four or more forwards, remove it from the game. Um. Pretty good. Uh, when Prompto enters the field, choose one forward. Your opponent controls. Break it. So this guy is gonna take down two things with himself. With him, guys, if he 
like he's a really good ex burst too so this is gonna add on to the like that cali special deck that like just plays all ex burst because imagine like you play him as the field if your opponent has four things he's gonna take two things from him uh so it's gonna take one remove from the game and then it's gonna take one and break it so it's a six drop for you know for like two that seems good in my book like people are paying six for you know, Tomos right now, right? Like, is a six drop of Tomos? Nah, this is better. <laughs> this will repl replace the Tomos at the very least. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be a good card. People are going to see a lot of this. All right, guys. So, next, we're moving on to Lightning. Uh, we have a couple here that are interesting. I like. Um, so, Alice. Uh, this is uh, one of the commons. Signs of the Seventh Dawn. Um, the card named Alpha Dawn you control gains a thousand power. And then, I don't know if you guys have made the same connection I did when I read that. That means we're getting another Alpha Nod, and it will be a forward this time, which is going to be cool. Uh, choose uh, Tap, you can choose card name Alpha Nod you control. It gains haste until the end of the turn. Okay, that's cool. It's kind of like um, like Nashu for Hildebrand. So I'm hoping uh, Alpha Nod is going to be pretty good, pretty decent. Um, it's not the same amount of power, but it will... Well, they have reverse effects, right? Like uh, Nashu gives him haste automatically, and then you can tap her for 2k, I believe. And then this guy is just plus 1k and then tap for haste, which isn't that much. It's actually worse in my opinion, um, but whatever. Because this one isn't threatening, right? He's always going to, you're always going to know he has a thousand power. So, uh, so obviously off the bat, you won't be able to play this and the other LSA, um, but yeah, it's not going to be good, but it's not going to, it's not going to go into the new Scions version. It will go into a different Scions version that we're going to be interested in. Something that will probably pay, play this and like, who knows, maybe different things like Earth, Ishtola, and, and like, I don't know, something else. But you might steer away from like the regular builds or something. I don't know. Uh, something to think about. So Scions are going to have two versions now is what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. Next is the Legendary. Rufus, four cost EX burst, president of Shinra. When Rufus enters the field, you may search for job member of the Turks. And add it to your hand when Rufus or a job member of the Turks, a uh, member of the Turks, I guess. You control is put from the field into the break zone. Choose one, act forward. Your opponent controls, deal it 5,000 damage. Um, meh. <laughs> uh, I think he's okay. He's a, he's a decent card. I don't know how I feel about him, though. He's really underpowered, and he's just for any experts to deal 5k. It's not enough, uh, unless these Turks are, like, cheap and, like, play it, like, you can play a lot of them at once. I don't know if this is going to see... I don't know. I haven't seen those other guys. And, well, I think we read one of them, but he's a backup. So it's like, I don't know. We got to look... We got to see really what the other ones are. Um, I'm not excited about the Turks yet. So far, they, they're, they've, these effects have been a little underwhelming. Uh, I guess it's... what's Overall, what's cool is that he's EX first. So that's going to make him, like, at least the search card. So you'll play at least two of this. Um, but hopefully he's not too expensive, so we can get on with that. Uh, Ramu, 4 cost CX for summon. Again, this 11 art has got me, like, <sighs> at least they chose a better, like, screen, like, snapshot of this guy. Uh, choose one active forward, deal it 5,000 damage, uh, 5,000 damage and 1,000 damage for each lightning backup you control. That's cool, so possible 10k. Um, again, see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. See, you see how all these cards, well, a lot of cards are going into that 10k range. You guys, please... Please, 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 you're going to have to watch out for the big bodies. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, let's say you're dropping. So even now with the Sid Previa thing, right? The Sid, uh, the Sid Previa combos, you'll have two backups, two, three backups, like turn two. This is dealing 8K on always on EX burst, which is great. Um, and I guess you could always, so 8K, yeah, 8, 8 to 9K on average, I, I would assume here. Um seven at the very least which isn't bad either um not the very least obviously but like seven because you'll always have at least two backups playing like light, the way lightning is now uh this is going to be a good card this this will probably see its main rotation in uh making zapped a little more better right like zapped has this target and two other round moves now so uh it's really just oh he has four targets well yeah he, actually he has a lot of targets but in terms of like you know ranking the playable ones it's like three drop four drop now this might make its way to the top three uh and i know people are playing the zapped into the one drops now because it's like you kill zapped i get the one cost deal 7k to a damage forward yeah so you know that's five round moves and then you have the other old ones uh but it's cool uh, i like it a lot 
Uh, next is Sakura. Now I'm excited about this one actually. Um, so it's another FFB. This is the other legendary, by the way. Um, when Sakura enters the field, choose one active forward your opponent controls. Deal at eight thousand. That's pretty good. Uh, dull five active lightning backups. Choose one forward, break it. Now this card, if she goes, so she comes in, right? You tap all five, bring her in, and the OK kill something. If she goes, she's pretty weak, and I know that. Like I know that because she's. I see it here. But uh, if she goes unchecked, uh, every turn she's just taking something away from you. Like break, 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 and that's that's gonna be annoying. <laughs> so I don't know how many of these you'll play. You'll probably tech one. She is. You could always like. So she is a um, ex death target, and you can always bring her back with. Uh, so I think you can always bring her back with Azimus, by the way. Uh, and I think she's going to be more threatening of a Lightning L than Noel was. Uh, mainly because, yeah, she'll come out and kill something effectively instead of, you know, attacking. Instead of Noel having to attack, which is slower than just dealing instant damage. So that's something to think about. And again, if she goes unchecked, just keep uh, keep killing stuff every turn. Like, you don't have to... You'll have this, and let's say... I don't know, Zemus or whatever, or, or Ilua, right? Usually this is, Ilua is always the one on the board. So it's just like, every time Ilua has to come, like, attack, you can just go, okay, I'll remove this from the equation first. And you can think about it, like, defensively too, right? Uh, let's say you're attacking, and... Or you can attack first. Leave all backups on the board while she's still there. And it's like, okay, I'll block with this. I'm like, okay, I'm winning the trade. Plus, and then they'll use Blast, then you go, now nah, break it. Like, I don't know, man. This It's going to be a good card. I think it's going to see a lot of play. I think people tech one. And if a lot of play means that everyone will play it, then yeah, I will see a lot of play. But you won't play more than one. I don't think, anyway. Uh, Janai. Janai uh, FLL Ninja. Back attack. First strike. Cool. Uh, when Janai enters the field, choose a forward your opponent controls. Deal 4,000. So he's a 4 for 4 uh, Wendy special. Uh, but he does have back attack, which is cool. So you can always be able to bring him out and like trade a, up an 8. Um... Let me think, let me think. Uh, the first strike, though, actually, he'll kill, not trade up, because he has first strike, right? So he'll kill, he'll kill eights. He'll kill eight or less, which is cool. And I think it's cool that Lightning's getting something like this now. Um, but, all right, so this, all right, so check this out. This is a combo for you right here. So let's say you have Sakura, right? And then she just dealt, uh, she dealt her AK last turn, and then she killed something, or you didn't have enough to kill something, right? But then she'll block. You'll bring out, uh, she'll just 4k to something, and then this guy will come out, maybe kill the other thing, or kill both of them, I don't know man, it's pretty good, there's a lot of stuff to think about here, um, I don't know if this is the ninja we need to make ninjas playable, but it's definitely something that can, something I'll look into later, uh, maybe I'll make another job class episode for that, I know it's been a while for those two, but yeah, that'd be great. Uh, next is the other summon, uh, Raiden, you can only pay with CP produced by backups to cast Raiden, Raiden, uh, choose a forward break it. Yeah, no, that's a hard no for me. So I don't like this. This is something I don't like so far. Um, these effects aren't good enough for me to warrant wasting all my backup CP. Um, Cause for this, we just play the other Odin, right? Like just four CP Odin, it's the same cost. If this was cheaper, then yeah, I get it. But if this did more, then I'd get it too. But it's not. It's the same card that's just not going to... I guess this is... Maybe it'll just go for the Mobius title deck. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if there's something you think about these, this one. But I don't see it, guys. Alright. Now we're finally talking about my favorite element. Uh, water. Uh, so uh, we did get a couple things here that I really like to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time because this video is already getting pretty long. But uh, two cost Paladin. Uh, tap and uh, one water and tap him, put Paladin in the break zone, choose a forward you control, uh, and one other forward you control. During this turn, the next damage dealt to the former is received by the latter, right? Uh, what that means is, you know, it's just what a Paladin does. It's cover or protect protect girl. It's just, he'll get in front of you and he'll take the damage, right? So you pick a forward that you want to live, let's say this other Zidane right next to it, and then you will pick Kegnazo, for example, which is probably the ideal situation in this in a water deck um and then Kegnazo will receive the damage instead of Zidane right this turn 
Uh, yeah, during this turn. So, and Kegnazo already has reduced damage. And if you have Minwu, so then Kegnazo will take all the hits this turn and not get it. I know it seems like a long stride, but um, a couple things I like about Paladin is that he is... Well, A, he's a Paladin, and that was always my job class when I played, like, MMOs. So it's cool. But it's also... Um, another breakable a decent breakable backup that water can access and you can have multiples of it too i don't know if i'd play three but like definitely maybe a one or two of something to just keep um you know stuff alive and i think <laughs> so the, again the 10k thing we were talking about is thing keeping things alive with such a strong like you know with things getting so strong is going to be important uh but i think also choosing what will die instead is important as well um but if we have like a death rattle ability like something that when it goes to the break zone you get this effect or whatever is important this will also help for that uh, also like that Luma, right like if i picked something and then chose that Luma to take all the damage that Luma will trade up or trade you know what i'm saying it doesn't matter if it's like and what's cool about this too is that it's not specific like it says choose one forward you control and another forward you control it didn't say one water forward and say one dark or light whatever which means this will go into any like combo deck into any like dual color or multicolor deck and if you have stuff that you want to die then you can always make sure that it dies right like i'll target this to save this and then but this will die i don't know it just forces um your opponent like you could always just block with the thing you want to die but what if they made it impossible i don't know like let's say they said unblockable right let's say fire is playing this thing can't block all right then but this thing will take the damage there's a difference right so it'll still die <laughs> interesting but loopholes uh next is the zidane this is the l which just probably uh, revealed recently uh if you have six or more cards in your hands Zidane cannot be blocked which is great right well, that always happens uh when zidane deals damage to your opponent draw two cards um solution number nine damn that's his uh that's his like one of his last uh transes trans abilities uh s and two waters choose a forward until the end of the turn it loses two thousand power for each card in your hand that's cool it just says what two for if let's say you had already hit something and drawn two cards you could possibly be at eight cards or do something by 16 that's cool i like that i like that a lot solution number nine seems good uh and it's not a tap ability so you can bring him out and s right away so if you had like the cards in your hand or if he was alive right and then you drew into it you can s while you still have like backups active and then just get the max value out of this um that's cool i like him he's definitely he's a two cost he's a two cost 3k right so we have to think about stuff like golbez golbez can spit him out um and what else what else um shelk he's a shelk target so you can bring him out so you can bring you can have shelk spit him out and then your opponent will discard a card and then maybe then you can give him haste somehow i don't know uh and then just attack for more He's a good card. He's gonna see play. People are gonna try to abuse the heck out of this guy, um, but three three thousand is not something. Um, and he doesn't have that like Paul ability, right? Like it can't be blocked by th uh, three or higher. So he's definitely gonna be. All I have to do is put it forward, and then he'll sit there until I can remove him. Um, but well, he does have the if you have six or more cards, right? I don't know, man. He's gonna have. He's gonna be another Paul, I guess, maybe. Yeah, let's think about him for a bit. <laughs> um, he's going to be... Don't sleep on this guy, man. He's going to be good. I think he'll see more play than other things do when they come out. But we'll see. Uh, next is a Shamond P. Grouch. Grouch. Um, this 11 art, man. It's getting worse. Uh, if you if a forward you control receives 1,000 damage, that damage becomes zero instead. Very oddly specific, but cool, I guess. Um... Maybe it helps in the 11 title deck. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's that's weird. Um, things that deal just a thousand, maybe just Cactuar that I'm worried about. But I don't know, man. We'll see. I think it was, I just put it in here because I found it oddly specific. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll find out. I'm sure someone will make use of it. Uh, next, we're going to the the monsters and one of the summons that we got. Uh, I like all of these a lot. They're gonna definitely be a. Uh, very interesting. So, uh, whale zombie. You can have multiple of this. Undead. This is from nine. Uh, I don't remember seeing this guy though. So, uh, put whale zombie. Uh, when whale zombie enters the field, draw a card. Cool. Uh, put whale zombie into the break zone. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Return these uh, to the top and or bottom in your deck in any order. So, cool. 
Um, I like this. It goes in tandem with like uh, the new. Uh, it's like another. Um, what is it? Scholar or Oracle? The one that uh, the water one. The one that water just got. Uh, so it's gonna help with the Yuna, the Yules, the Fusoyas. It's gonna help with uh, Shortingers. It might go in a monster, a water monster deck. It's gonna be cool. Uh, it kind of just nets you. It's pretty much a card. It's, it's one for one, right? So you're playing pretty much playing a 47 card deck. Uh, but even better because it does something. <laughs> um, he's cool, decent. He'll probably see play more more in a water monster water deck. Uh, and now this one, uh, Melty Gemini. Uh, the power of lords cannot be increased by summons or abilities, and this looks like um, Scorn and uh, Thorn and Zorn uh, when they. I'm pretty sure this is. It doesn't say it, but it's uh, Zorn and Thorn when they like when Kuja like freaks them out and makes them a monster and whatever. Um, the power of lords cannot be increased by summons or abilities. Now this card is gonna change things uh so again uh one of the things i've been saying this whole video is that power increase is going to be in power and it's going to be dangerous but if i drop this on the board then it kind of says no and uh, nullifies things which is good which is good for water and it's good for cloud of darkness um so he can take things on just the way they are i hate that i'm gonna have to play this probably in a lot of stuff <clears throat> or people are gonna have to play this in a lot of decks so uh this is gonna be a good card Next is Leviathan, three cost EX burst. Choose a forward until the end of the turn, it loses 1,000 power for each water character you control. Now this card is nuts, right? Like, um, this might replace, I don't wanna say this might replace Kegnazo, but it might, right? Um, I don't know, man, because Kegnazo does the board, right? But this guy does one for every character. So you have five backups, let's say five forwards, and let's say two monsters, that's 12. Any combination, right? As long as you're playing mono water, this card is insane. So this might be the new Leviathan. We might go from back to your hand Leviathan to this Leviathan or play both. Um, I wouldn't have been mad if this was like a four cost or uh, excuse me. Wouldn't have been a four cost and then said draw a card kind of like Chugalane. But um, I think they're not going to give us any more of those um, without like those are too easy for us. Um, but anyway, yeah, power reduction is going to be good. So this card is very strong. I'm going to be using this one a lot. All right, so for the win cards, we're going to run through these, though. Uh, Death Gaze, uh, also from Nine. I love that a lot. Nine's getting a lot of cards. Uh, that's going to make Steiner and Echo a lot more playable. So Nine variants are going to be real strong. Uh, be on the lookout for those. Uh, Death Gaze, uh, when Death Gaze enters the field, choose a forward. Your opponent controls, remove from the game, as long as Death Gaze is on the field. Uh, this is going to be super cool um, because he's three drop. And what I mean by that is because he lives in that realm where it's it, you need a card that says break a monster, not a card not that puts him like Ramu. It's, it avoids Ramu, right? So Ramu says uh, two or less, and there's a lot of things that say monsters two or less. Uh, so putting him at three makes him a little over that like safety safety point. Like puts him in that safety point, which I like. Uh, and he's might be good at, at a one. Well, I wouldn't play more than one of him because he isn't like you can't have multiples of him. But he's good to do that one of and just remove something like. Get it out of the way for the entire game. Thanks. Uh, and then put Archer into the break zone. Uh, choose a forward. Deal it 10,000 damage. Again, but the problem is this is a forward. Uh, it's not bad though, right? Like, it's it's on curve and it'll do what it needs to as the game goes on. So, I think it's okay. It might might play uh, one or two of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. The problem is that you're losing a forward, right? And you're paying CP. So, it's expensive. Like... You're losing board presence and CP over time. I don't know. It has its pros and cons. I'm okay with it. It's not the worst. I love the art, though. Um, and another Alexander. Choose a character of cost four or more. Break it. I'm glad this will replace... This is better than that other Alexander that says five or more. But uh, it's still not enough. What's cool about this, though, is that, like, with things getting so big, it just it'll just remove it. And it's good for Win to have an option like this, I think. So it's not a bad card. Uh, next will be the real good ones. <laughs> All right, so first is Selkie. Uh, when Selkie is put from the field into the break zone, your opponent puts the top two cards of his his or her deck into the break zone. If both cards are the same type, draw a card. So four drop, 8K, super great. Uh, you can have multiples for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, I hope that's not a misprint, and we find out later that you can actually have one. 
It says standard unit, but it has a name. I'm really confused about this. If anybody has an answer for this question, because I don't remember Crystal Chronicles enough to, like, you know, check this out myself, but or like do it off the top of my head. But whatever. Uh, once uh, so she's gonna help with Mildex. She might change the the way Mildex or how could I say uh, built, but she's gonna be uh, definitely useful. Uh, she's actually not a bad card to play regularly either, right? Uh, when she's put from the break zone, your opponent puts the top two cards of his deck. Uh, if both cards are the same type, draw one card. Um, yeah, I think she's going to be a great card. She might. Uh, I'm definitely going to try her out. She's she's going to be fun. Uh, next is Fina. Now, this is the one of the win legendaries. And from Final Fantasy Brave Exvius again. Uh, I feel like they're really pushing the Brave Exvius, which is great. Um, if you guys don't play that game, check it out. Uh, if you pay the cost... Uh, yeah, the, if you pay the cost to play Fina onto the field, you may pay an extra three win CP. Uh, when Fina enters the field, select one of the following two of actions. If you pay the extra cost, select two of the following actions. Um, so deal 5,000 damage to all forwards your opponent controls and activate all characters you control. Okay, so that's cool. So if you pay the extra, you can... If you pay the extra and use your backups, you get all your backups up anyway. Um, and she does 5,000 to the board. That's cool. Uh, I don't think Wind Alone has a lot of that just deals damage to everything, but um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I can just think of renewing her right away. It's just like 5k and then 5k to everything, so it's a board wipe. Um, but activating everything is cool, so effectively you can come out and do both almost always free. I don't want to say always free, because you do have to pitch two cards at least. Because um, it's, what is it, 9 CP? Yeah. Or even three cards. So I guess you're losing cards. Uh, I still think she's a good card. She sits. She sits on a on a high, on a high curve there. Six for nine. Um, yeah, she's gonna be all right. Um, she might be dangerous. Be careful. <laughs> um, Sherlota, uh, FCC mysterious woman. If you if you pay a CP, you may push Sherlota into the break zone and produce one CP of any element. You can dole Sherlota to pay the CP. All right, so <clears throat> I think she got it ratted. Uh, they already wrote an article on how it didn't translate the way it was supposed to. Uh, so there is an errata on this card. Uh, and pretty much what it says is that you can uh, just send her to the breakstone to produce any CP, um, but she can also tap for one. Um, and that would be, so she generates two CP, I believe is the correct, correct thing uh, about her. Um, I'll leave the link in the description below just so you guys can double check it. Uh, with me um but yeah that's uh it's gonna be a cool card uh, at least it'll open up like multicolored decks a little bit more because you will be able to play her and then like the worst case scenario and i mean honestly the worst case scenario is if you get color locked or whatever she will fix that and since you probably play two of her anyway you'll play into the other one in the future and then that'll help too so <clears throat> decent card um people are excited about this one i'm okay about this one <laughs> All right, now we're about to wrap up the video, guys. We're running into the ice. Uh, and I didn't save ice for the end for any reason. It's probably the ones I was least excited about, so it's probably why we're there here. Um, <clears throat> and now they also have the least amount of slides, so or well, the least amount of cards I was able to find. So um, cool. On the on the real, though, the, this one is cool. It just looks cool, right? Uh, seed Candidate, Squall. When Squall enters the field, if your opponent controls any dull forwards, your opponent discards a card. So very, very easy. They attack last turn. You, you will discard a card. And then for two ice and one colorless, choose one forward. Uh, dull it. You can only use this ability if you have no cards in your hand. Uh, that seems like a lot. Um, I don't think I need this, but the first part's decent. Uh, it's a four drop AK, so he's okay. Uh, seed Candidate lets him searchable by the selfie. Uh, he's eight. Uh, and people just like him because of the art, so. <laughs> yeah, he's Kingdom Hearts uh, Squall, so. That's cool. He's all right. Uh, Scholar, uh, I think Ice, uh, Ice got, probably got some of the cooler backups for themselves, which is cool. Um, I really enjoy this one. Put Scholar into the break zone, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a nice card, add it to your hand. So, again, it's super free. It'll Imagine playing three of this, right? And you open two of them, and then you pitch, pitch to get two of them. And as you're going on the game, you'll be like, all right, I just need an extra card this turn. I just need an extra card this turn. <coughs> it's really good. Um, but this is obviously specifically for Mono Ice. Um, unless you're playing Earth Ice and you have the Yule and you can always check it. Um, but then again, you have too many back. That's probably not enough room for all this stuff because whatever you're playing. 
Uh, but still a good card. I think it's good that Ice got also a really decent breakable backup. Two cost anyway, that's going to be helpful. And then uh, another six re rework. Uh, four cost sets are EX Burst. When sets are enters the field, choose a category six forward in your break zone and add it to your hand. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, he's going to be good. Uh, six Again, the six title deck is going to get really strong, I think. Um, but uh, it's definitely fun. I think... I don't know how much more play he'll see than the other one, but I like him. I like this one mainly because he does a lot. He's he's on that he's on that good spot, you know, four drop ex burst that lets you get something back. Uh, he's kind of like the one I think it's Rem from uh, the Type O people. It does the same thing, but yeah, he's good, and that's probably the most the best feature that the typos have. So he's gonna be in that same same sweet spot for them. Uh, next is. The <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, there we go. All right, uh, black mage. <clears throat> this one I didn't like so much again, but they didn't have much. I don't like. I, I don't like this one for a lot of reasons. Um, but I will try to find something good for him. Uh, so he's eleven, and his art is terrible. Um, but he's a two cost backup, which is always a plus. And then for five CP, two ice, and three colors, put black mage into the break zone. Choose a dull forward, deal it nine thousand damage. Now this is not enough for me. <clears throat> it's it's stuff it's kind of like that other one that we have right now i think it's like a ninja that lightning has that just it's pay so much or it's i think it's another black mage actually it's the 14 black mage that just says uh you know deal a bunch of damage and pay a lot of cp it's not worth it um it's my it's gonna excuse me this will be your ice backup when you're playing in the draft so yeah i guess it'll see some play there but that's about it uh it's also a black mage which is We've seen the funny red mage decks, but we haven't seen the funny black mage decks. So adding this to that possibilities might be useful, but that's gonna need to be explored. And I'm not about to start like my Opus 8 like adventure with this card. Um, and last but not least is Dark Fina. Uh, funny thing is uh, because of the way this got printed, I don't know if you, if you look at it the way it is, right? It kind of looks like water, but then when you look in the you know the text it has the ice symbol so i was excited for this at first but now uh well i'm still excited for this card it's gonna be good i think ice is gonna like this uh when dark fiend enters the field select one or one of the two following actions if you ever see five points of damage or more select up to two of the following actions instead right search for one summon and add it to your hand uh cast one summon of cost seven or less from your hand without paying cost um now Remember, when all when you're dealing with cards, uh, they always read their effects from top to bottom, right? So you do one first and then the other. So I think the way this is going to be, if you've received five points of damage, is you can search a summon, add it to your hand, and then cast it. Uh, don't hold me to that. Don't like quote me on anything like that. But I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work, uh, which is going to be strong for ice. Uh, now, if you if you go back to what it said, if you have received five points of damage, you can do both. Um, putting this in fire might be really good. So fire already has a lot of high cost, uh, you know, well, it has one of the best seven costs, right? Uh, and that is Phoenix. So you're going to be able to drop her, search Phoenix, play Phoenix, maybe get the Vivi out. Vivi hits something. There's a lot of possibilities there. Um, and if you don't, like you can always search a Phoenix and cast another Phoenix from your hand, whatever, right? But I think she's really cool. And then imagine just like doing Renoa with her too, like, Hitting her with the Renoa and then casting another summon for free. I don't know, man. I like this card a lot. I think this is a good way to end this episode, uh, this video. Guys, thanks again for listening. I hope you guys are excited as, uh, for the set as I am. Uh, we were going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. I have some good news, hopefully, next week uh, about stuff. But until then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, and I'll see you then.